With today's watercolor painting of an autumn landscape, I'm going to show you how to make a watercolor look bright and beautiful with my watercolor top 5 tips. And the best, it applies to any subject, whether it is portraits, landscapes, or anything else. Hi, this is Francoise, welcome or welcome back to my channel, let's dive into the tips. My first tip is to pick colors strategically with a winning color palette. And no, as surprising as this may seem, that does not mean they need to be flashy, not at all. On the contrary, to make colors glow and look beautiful, you can do two different things. The first one is to pick a variety of them that will complement each other. This is what I did here. I used my Tropicals watercolor set from the brand Art Philosophy. I noticed this set had gorgeous autumn colors in it, even though it's called Tropicals. Check it out in the description of this video as well as the full list of my supplies. I am preparing my mixes and first I decide to use orange, plain. Then I take the same color, orange, and I make another complementary mix with green. The association of these two, green and orange, is giving me a muted tone of greenish orange that I think will go well with a plain orange mix. To keep preserving some kind of a harmony between all colors, I make a brown mix now using a bit of orange in there. I have three mixes now and all of them have that orange shade in there. This technique is not by itself what will make your painting look bright, but I use it as means to select colors that I know will work well together, and I think that's an important first step before even looking at making things bright. So here I am with muted tones, but let's look at how I'm going to manage a bright and beautiful painting. I talked about two things you can do with your winning color palette. The first being to pick a variety of colors that work well together, what we just did. The second one, and that one is crucial, is to make sure there are dark colors and light ones there. Looking at my palette, you can see the tone in which I used brown and orange is fairly dark, while the other two are brighter. Now on to our tip number two, we want to preserve some light areas in our painting, no matter what it is, portraits, landscape. For instance here, I make sure to give some room to those two light mixes I just mentioned. So I'm not coloring up my background with a brown shade, but still I want some of it to help emphasize the lighter areas even more. You can see I slowly increase the intensity of my paints. That means I start very light with my lightest mix, which is the greenish orange one that actually looks more like a nice yellow on paper. Slowly I add the other mixes. Later I add paints in all of my mixes and I keep adding to get more intense tones. I'm not afraid to use the darkest mix of brown too. The most stunning paintings have a high contrast of colors, it's what I'd like to achieve here. By the way, I'm covering it all with paint here, but remember you can also preserve some whites in your paper. That's always gorgeous in the end since white is going to be the shiniest, brightest color of all, especially if you follow through with today's tips. As I'm drying this background with my heat gun, I think I could make this even better since my light areas are not really popping out that much for now. I might have added a bit too much of the brown mix, but you'll see that is no problem as long as you didn't go too dark, too fast on your initial layer. This leads me to my third tip, layer to emphasize bright areas. I love layering because of that. It helps adding depth to any painting. It makes everything looks more natural and beautiful as long as, like I just said, you make sure to never darken a first layer too much. I made this mistake before several times and it's ruined my paintings every single time because I could see that I overdid my colors way too much and I was not able to add detail while making it look good. When I started these failed paintings over with a lighter background and that I layered as a second step, it was always a success. And I could add details while preserving a stunning glow. It's really one of those techniques that I use a lot in my paintings. When I wet everything again here and I add colors again, you can see I'm keeping that yellow area in the top half almost untouched. I just add touches of my plain orange mix all around to add brightness around the lightest area, and here and there I'm adding my brown shade. I add it very lightly though, I dab the brush here and there with it. The last thing I want in a second layer is to miss the mark by using too much of my darker tone, so it will just be a little bit of it as a way to make my orange and yellow tones come out even better. I think you can tell how much better it's looking now and how the brown emphasizes the other two colors in a nice way. 
My fourth tip is to use the details in your painting to enhance shadows in a subtle way. Of course, we could keep the painting as it is, a beautiful background. We already managed to make it look bright and beautiful as it is. In most cases, however, chances are you will be adding some details no matter what it is you're painting, landscape, animal, portrait. For the details, we're going to proceed in the same way we did for the background. Here I'm tracing some stems to draw plants. I added more brown in my brown mix to make those stems stand out against the background. It looks nice, but still it's pretty flat this way. We'll need to add some shadows to make them look more realistic, better shaped, and the realism being based on the great use of lights and shadows, this will flatter our background and plant nicely. I'm going darker on the stems and the base of the little flowers, not sure where these are, and I'll link the reference photo I used for this painting in case you need it. It's looking a lot better with the darker tones already, but there is something missing, can you tell what it is? We need to use the details to add highlights, that is my fifth tip. We need highlights, and what's better for that in watercolor than using white gouache? White gouache or a white gel pen or a Posca pen. For me, the best and what looks most natural still is gouache because it goes well with watercolor and it's easy to fade. The other two can't be melted into the painting like gouache can. Let me show you how I do that. First, I'm going to add cute little highlights on top of each flower. We could imagine the sun is hitting those in that area. First, I added a bit of my yellowish mix to the white gouache, but then I decided those highlights would pop even more if I used plain white gouache. I make sure to use the gouache as thick as can be. All I want is enough water in it that it's easy to paint with it. If there is no water in your gouache, it will be too thick and really hard to apply as a simple highlight. I add some on the stems, here and there, to add light to these two. It's looking absolutely beautiful. I decided to add the butterflies, I just changed some things if you look at the reference. For the butterflies, I use the same techniques I described before. I start very light, then I add some shadows, I add a few details with the dots, and finally I highlight it all with the gouache. Those butterflies are a great example of how you can melt the gouache in the rest of the painting. You just have to stretch it with a wet and damp brush. It's nice because it gives these butterflies a transparent look. It's very pretty, but I notice they're a bit discreet compared to the plants. I'm going to use my technique of adding thick white gouache as a way to highlight a few places on them. I do that on the edges a bit and I place bright dots. This really makes them stand out, as well as the plants. And that's what I wanted to show you, how you can brighten up a whole painting with light versus dark colors, like we did in the background, then very strong shadows and bright white gouache as a means to make the subject pop and to flatter the background at the same time. If you enjoyed this video and my tips, please like this video, you can share it and comment to give me feedback on it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.